Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to J3 Entertainment. I'm Ronan Shogun, the Ninja Assassin. Firestarter himself, Sable Rocks. And we got a movie review for you guys today. Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. I'm ready to fight. I know, I know, I know, bro. Let me get him. So let's break things down. First of all, we talk about the good and bad. We break down our favorite scenes, and then we give our grade. But also, just a little warning, we do have spoilers. We like to talk about scenes and stuff. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, save this video on the watch later archives and then come on back and if you don't care then stick around so uh where are we starting bro good or bad let's start with the good man okay i think i'm gonna let you go first all right man so i already let you know how i feel about this movie but for all the bad that i have to say the good things about this movie for as much resident evil as we got in this movie this was the most resident evil resident evil movie ever yeah. um whoever did the stage design had a love and a passion for the Resident Evil games. I'm looking at scenes and I'm seeing puzzles that I recognize from parts of the game. You see little ink ribbon, the type of the little things yeah, matter. Whoever did the set dressing vehemently loved this game because it was so many things you didn't even have to put in there. You so, had to be a real diehard fan to peep out some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I did. So I'm in the theater. Oh, that's the this. Oh, that's this. And I was loving that part. Okay. And for the shots that did work, they worked really well. Yeah. They were executed perfectly for a video game movie. All right, for sure. For me, my goods, I will say uh, the directing was solid. Uh, the cinematography was cool. The atmosphere, the suspense, Ooh, the tension, yeah. uh, that slow burn pacing, uh, the way it's set up. Felt like I had a controller in my hand for an hour and a half in the theater. You know, it gave me that experience. And uh, for that, I really can't knock it, bro. That's that's my good. And then uh, seeing uh, some of the characters from the game that look like the characters from the game. One guy? A few. A few? A few. Okay. Oh, a few. Okay. We'll get to it. But that's, that's where my good is right now. All right, man. Let's jump on this bad thing. Okay. I'm going to let you start. You're going to let me start? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say, for me, the bad was the combination of combining one and two of Resident Evil. And also what they did to Leon. And my other bad is that uh, the ending felt rushed. Okay. I felt it was more of a setup film. Granted, I, I get what they were trying to do, but it was, it was confined and cramped. Okay. Those those are my big three gripes. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to the bad man, for me, this movie functionally didn't accomplish what it was trying to accomplish. And that is taking the first game and the second game and combining it into one abridged movie. That was my worst fear when I saw the trailers and it came true. It did not work. Um, the first 15 minutes, I'm in it, I'm loving it. But as the movie went on, the movie doesn't even get started till an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. You, I know you enjoyed it, but you cannot functionally have a slow burn action zombie movie. It does not functionally work. <sighs> slow burn. You see, you said it's slow burn action zombie. I felt like it was a little more of a slow burn suspense though, because like part one's like that. I thought they was letting off too many shots with a machine gun for me to call it a suspense thriller. Yeah. Though you know, it had its moments, but overall it's supposed to be an action film. I just don't understand how this movie I get got that. greenlit. I just I think it was a good way to say, hey, this is a new vision, this is a new interpretation. I I, I like the risk that they took. I appreciate that. Isn't that the problem with video game movies? It's not this director's vision that's been a 20-something year staple. Right, it right. was the original Capcom design story that got us this far. Why don't they try to stay a little more true to that? The fans will love it and the casuals will love it. True, But when true. you try to just appeal to the casuals, you alienate the diehard fans like me. And that, to me, was the worst part of this movie. All right. You seem like you got a lot of passion on this. So what like we going to do is, Ronan. I feel you, bro. So don't what we like going to do is, I'm going to do us both a favor. We're going to get down into their favorite scenes and we're going to talk about Good and bad scenes. Okay. All right, so I'm going to let you go first on this. Yo, Fight, bro. Go ahead. Uh, my favorite scenes, I got to say, the whole first 15, roughly 20 minutes okay. was digging it. It was like, yeah. okay, I'm not hating this. Got the guy, the truck driver, eating his little burger. Yeah. All those scenes. Like, I'm loving that. Outside of that, everything else fell flat. The scenes were not executed well, and this is his director's first film. No, no, no. no. Thought, he's done. He's done some other stuff. I could have sworn I heard this was his first film. Nah. Maybe, maybe that he first. Nah, he's done no, some other stuff. No indirect. He's, he's got his feet wet. Nah. Indie. Yeah. Those it's don't main, count, bro. No nah, mainstream stuff. Oh, he, he oh. Yeah, don't do him like that. Yeah, he's direct. His stuff. weaknesses show in this. Like you can tell certain scenes. Like okay, you got that done really good. But then there are other scenes like that was too artsy. You doing too much action. These don't feel. I see where you're going. His reactions to certain characters they didn't feel human in a zombie film. Okay. It's like that was no, I can, I can hear that. I can hear that. I will say, I'm gonna jump off that. So, one of my favorite scenes was uh, the beginning 20 minutes to set up getting the feel for Raccoon City and letting us know that this was a decaying town and how they spoke on like the environments and stuff like that. They were letting you know that this was a dying, threatening city. 
and that there was stuff going on, how they talked about the corporations. And I felt like the timepiece of setting it in 1998 kept it fresh and authentic. You didn't have too much technology at your hands. So it, it made more of a dreadful, you know, no safe zone situation. Yeah. It kept you like, okay, there's no way out. We don't have technology in this time and era. And I like how they spent the whole time, you know, showing these characters interact from different universes. Because, again, I know how stuff plays out. But it was just fresh to see, like, them go a different direction with things that you're already familiar with. I thought that was cool. And, again, I like the suspense and the way they set up the detective and uh, the cop drama and stuff like that. It felt like an old school movie in a sense. Sometimes it didn't feel like Resident Evil and sometimes it did. And I felt like with the certain scenes, there were moments where it felt like different genre movies. And that's pretty cool, though. I can agree with you right there. I just don't think it was executed perfectly the way that he intended it to. Okay. Um, you know, you get the scene where it shows Claire running away and leaving her brother, Chris. Right, and This right. is where I come in and say that I feel alienated. Okay. Claire that went to a zombie infested city and fought her way to the police station just to find her brother. Right, right. And then later ends up going all the way to Antarctica just to find her brother. Yeah. She would never have abandoned Chris to be experimented on in some... Uh, orphanage. He ain't lying, y'all. And that's what's like, you adding all these new things to yeah. the universe, but they don't work the characters. They don't look like the characters, and they don't act like the characters. So where are my characters? Where is my Leon? Where is my Jill? So I will say this. Leon Kennedy, his scenes, I'm not going to say they were cringe, but it was like an uncomfortable setting because they took the ideal of a rookie not really knowing anything and it worked in the beginning, but they kept pushing like that he was a dimwit. He didn't know anything. So I'm I'm thinking, is that progression to set him up as he's gonna become that guy at the end? Bro. Or I, I I'm not sure what they're doing. Was that supposed to be a satire? Like I was in the theater I don't know. shaking angry at how they did my boy Leon. Top of his class, right. police academy Leon, yeah. who was a shoe in to be another Stars member at some point? Yeah. A screw-up cop? No. That tells me that the writer doesn't even know his homework on the character. No, I feel that. You ain't lying on that Why? either. Why? He was a screw-up the whole movie? Yeah. How was he even alive? He didn't... He, I found this shotgun. Like, you know how to use it? What? You don't know how to use a shotgun? Yeah. What did you do? It's just like... It was all what like... Doing the coincidental uh, survival techniques. You don't know how to do a like, gun? Yeah, that Mother. was crazy. But you knew how they pick up a rocket launcher, though. Right. Ah, come on. This and I think that was that was the part where it was like, oh, they tried to throw some fan service right. in to redeem him. Again, I I get what they was trying to do with Leon. This is, I hear you on your on your bads and your negatives, and this is why I said in the scenes, they tried to find ways to humanize these characters because when we're playing the games, it was all about the mission. We never really got to get into their personalities or psyches. We were just there trying to survive. We never saw them as, as human beings before the mission was given to them. You see what I'm saying? I disagree. I think that's what that was. The same thing happened with Wesker. I didn't like what they did with him. But I understand that they tried to humanize him. They had to give him something because if you did him like they did in the games, granted it would be dope. But now he's just a stereotypical villain. But this is the pros and cons to that. Resident Evil has cheesy elements. Okay. Resident Evil is inspired by B-movies. Jill Sandwich. They should have just embraced that. Okay. But they were trying to give it a little more seriousness to it. And I and I can commend them for that. They were trying to give us something new because that we've seen that stuff in the game already. That's they were trying to complement both. They were trying to give us some and then dial back and then they were trying to give us something new. I, I saw what they were doing. It was like tic tac toe. I think humanizing Wesker is what killed him for me. It's bad enough you didn't give him his shades to the very end of the right. movie. Right. See what I'm saying? How they compliment it, stuff. But, but then change it at the same time. That's like, what I'm saying. When you change things yeah. and you make them worse and not better, right, right. don't change them. I feel you. you. Know? So it's like Jill in love with Wesker? No. He's a designer, baby. He's supposed to be a cold, calculated, evil genius, secretly undercover. Typical villain. Right, and he gets he gets yeah. deeper later on, but yeah. in the first movie, give him his typical villain origins. He's out here proud of his tyrant, which we didn't get to see. All right, but they did tease it though. We know it's coming. Is it though? It's gonna yeah. be so out of place. It was supposed to be at the mansion. But well, they we were we were there. They they did tease it though. They okay. they I, I think they were focusing more on uh, Cole Veronica. A little little too far ahead, yeah, don't I, you think? Yeah, but I, I see what they're doing though. It's that should have been like a third movie. I think that works. But with this I, weakness. this is this is again. This is the Resident Evil sandbox. And this is why the scenes work in a different fashion for me. Because they were playing it safe by giving us the first two movies. Everyone loves the first two games. This movie does a good job of bringing those together and just giving us those gaming experiences. I think that was the whole purpose. Does it? It felt more like a fan film Did than it? an actual... Yeah. 
the liquor. Because it was a bunch of fan service. The liquors. No, it was it was a decent that's amount what of fan it was. service in the earlier parts, but later on the liquor scene, we didn't get our iconic liquor scene where Leon looked at the puddle of blood and look up. Like there was just yeah. little things you could have done. They changed to make it though. More but they 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 gave us a little bit of it. Again, like they they move stuff around. And I'm okay with the shifting though. I, I will say that this movie does leave the door open where I do want to see more because I believe that this is the closest to a Resident Evil uh, authentic, you know, representation we're going to get. I feel like this is the closest thing It makes me so sad we're gonna when get. you say that, that this is the closest thing we ever going to get. Because no one else understands it. They didn't understand it. Yeah, I thought they did. Man, that was who was that? That was not Jill Valentine. I think she was more Jill than what we got in the other stuff. No, I can't even say that, bro. She didn't look like Jill. And at first I was like, okay, man, they race swapping here. A little wokey points. But I okay. didn't, That didn't bother me, though. It didn't at first. I was like, maybe she's going to embody the spirit of Jill Valentine. And she didn't. Our Jill Valentine wasn't scared of nothing. She wasn't in love with Wesley. She was out getting a job done. She wouldn't have been stuck nowhere because she's a master. Her dad was a master thief. Cat yeah. She'd have been picking locks and getting through all type of stuff. We didn't see none of her strengths portrayed in this film. Because this is a Resident Evil 2 movie. And she don't belong in no Resident Evil 2. You ain't lying. All right, so you know what? Since we got our, our favorite scenes and stuff out of the way, let's get this movie a grade, man. I'm going to let you go first because you're still fighting. Go ahead. Bro. Oh, my God, bro. I can't say it's not a functioning film. It got a beginning and an ending, however rushed it is. Yeah. Y'all can't get this movie no higher than two out of five stars. Okay. I'm going to say for me, uh, I thought it was a cool fan service film. I got the Resident Evil experience I wanted. This movie only had a few things to do for me. Give me survival horror in the theater, make me feel like I'm playing a game. It did that. I'm going to give this three stars, man. Just one star? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not, a, it's not a bad movie. Like, this is, this is what I wanted. This is all I wanted them to do. And they gave it to me. And there, it's not a perfect film. I never said that. You're right. There's things that they can work on and progress and make better. But for the most part, the atmosphere, the spirit, and the, and the fusion of Resident Evil is here. It's intact. You can feel it. They had all the ingredients to give me exactly what I wanted, and they chose to put almonds in my brownie when I specifically said no almonds. I feel that. Yeah, that's, that's not a good. That's not a good taste. But I get you though, bro. That's all I got to say about it, man. All right, man. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, let us know in the comments what you thought about Resident Evil: Welcome to Raccoon City. Uh, once again, I'm Ronan Shogun, Ninja Assassin. I'm Sable Rocks. Hundred thousand subscribers. We coming, y'all.